Hey guys, what's up? This is Clayton from The Hoth, and today I want to share with you something pretty cool. Last week we were in Chicago, and I had the honor of speaking at the Search Engine Journal Summit, and I spoke about brand reputation hacking in 2017. Um, it was really cool. I got to share the stage with some huge names, um, people from Google, people from Bing, people from Yex. So a lot of a lot of big brands were there speaking, and I got the chance to talk about what's going on in terms of SEO and, and reputation in the search engines today. Um, so since you probably didn't get a chance to be there at the actual conference and see this speech live, I wanted to still share it with you. And so I thought I'd record this uh, presentation. It's exactly pretty much what I did, just a couple modifications, and uh, give it to you because people paid you know hundreds of dollars to go to this conference. So I thought it'd be cool to share this with you. So if you want to improve your reputation, if you want to get more reviews, if you want to build this fortress of positivity around your brand, this is the presentation for you. Guys, I want to be showing you you why it's so important today, how SEO influences reputation, how it's become so prominent. I'm going to show you how it helps you get uh, more traffic, more rankings, more clicks. I'm going to show you how Google is really changing the game. And then I'm going to walk you through exactly how you can build your own, um, you know, get, get a ton more reviews for yourself. I'm going to show you how you can prevent negative reviews. And I'm going to show you how you can actually make more money by, by doing this review process. So it's a really value-packed presentation, and, and I'm really happy to share it with you. So with that said, guys, um, let me just uh, get right into it. Uh, my name is Clayton Johnson, and I am the COO of the Hoth SEO company, if, uh, if you have never met me before. And for the last six or seven years, basically my expertise has been in marketing operations, meaning that um, I spend a lot of time figuring out how to create successful marketing campaigns and scale those, whether you're a small business or you're a Fortune 500 company, okay? And uh, in that time with the Hoth, we've had the opportunity to work with thousands of SEO and marketing agencies and in clients around the world since 2010. So uh, we work with, yeah, in clients, and we also work with a ton of resellers or agencies that resell our services to their clients. So it doesn't matter who you are, this, this presentation should apply to you, okay? And today, basically, I have a two-part talk, and it kind of is going to go like this. The first part is reputation disruption and the SEO effects. So I'm going to be talking about what is actually going on in the search engines in terms of reputation, how that affects, how reputation affects your SEO and how your SEO affects your reputation, right? And then the second part is about building a reputation marketing machine. So I'm gonna take you through some strategies, tactics that are just gonna help you build reputation, get way more reviews, get reviews fast, and build a, basically a, a, a fortress of positivity around your brand. So I'm gonna show you some case studies, all that kind of stuff. So it's gonna be a lot of fun. So with that said, guys, let's get right into it. This is part one, the reputation disruption and the SEO effect. So what is actually happening in the SERPs in 2017? So quick little story about us. This is the Hoth monster, and uh, he was born you know, a, a few, few years, or, years ago or came to life. <laughs> Um, but the, the reality is we actually we started in 2010, and we actually started in Chicago where I gave this presentation. And... Um, the Hoth is, it's actually an acronym. So H-O-T-H stands for hit them over the head. And the idea behind that is that we wanted to really bludgeon everyone with awesomeness, hit you over the head with awesomeness, whether that be in, uh, with our products or our, uh, customer support or your experience with us or any facet of our business. We wanted to hit you over the head with a really great experience. The reason we did that is because when we started in 2010, the internet was kind of plagued, or the SEO industry was kind of plagued by really shady SEO providers, at least for small businesses. It was hard for small businesses to get really good service. A lot of times people would buy services, SEO services or links or whatever, off of forums, off of somebody you didn't know, and they had really poor customer service, and sometimes the quality wasn't that great. So from the beginning, we really took our reputation very seriously, and you know it, we even baked it into our name, the Hoth, right? And so our, our reputation was super important. So we we did that, and um, basically, you you guys know that uh, right after we started, uh, some of the biggest updates of Google history came out, right? So we saw uh, 
Google Penguin and Google Panda. And so for a small uh, startup like link building company, this would probably be a pretty scary time for us. Um, you know, a lot. I think a lot of providers were, were wiped off the map, but obviously we're, we're still around today. We survived through that and we continue to grow. And um, that was pretty cool because, you know, we, we took I think the reason we survived through that is we took reputation so seriously. You know, we instead of being just a, a no name, no face provider that provided cu poor customer service, we really concentrated on our customers and kept them up to date with what's going on in the SERPs and improved our products and all kinds of stuff. So we took it really seriously to, to serve our customers better. So reputation was super important to us. But over the last couple years, what happened is that um, we really started to grow. Again, we had a massive growth spurt, bigger than bigger than even the beginning. Um, and we're on, we were onboarding all these new customers and all kinds of stuff. And what we realized is that even though we had a really great reputation with our current customers, what was happening in the search engines is that we weren't really showing that. We no one could really see that we had this great reputation. Um, as our brand was growing and people were searching for it. So I think that was kind of a, a scary thing, right? We, to an outsider that didn't know us before, we actually had no reputation, um, even though with our current customers, we had a really great one. And I think that's one of the biggest problems that a lot of brands have is they, they focus on their service or their products uh, and make them really great, but they never actually go and promote it and show it, right? Um, so if you don't do that, you obviously have you have no reputation. So what do we do? So we went and we started working on this and making sure that uh, everyone knows that we have a great reputation. And we were able to totally change it. We went from no reputation to a 4.9 star average in less than one month. So this can happen really, really quickly, okay? Um, now we have a five-star Google rating. So when you search the Hoth and you get the knowledge panel that comes up, we have a five-star rating in there and a ton of reviews. And we actually have hundreds of positive reviews spread across multiple websites. That really creates a, a fortress of, of positivity around the brand. And the reality is we're just getting started, right? We've, we haven't been doing this for a super long time, probably less than a year. And, um, you know, we're, we're really just getting started. We have, you know, hundreds of reviews now. So it's been a, been a success. And on top of that, um, after we did it for ourselves, we actually started helping lots of other brands. So we've helped hundreds of other businesses improve their reputation as well. Whether they had no reputation or they had a bad reputation, we can, we've helped hundreds of businesses um, really change that, right, with, with these tactics that I'm going to be sharing with you today. So my speech today has basically three takeaways that you'll want to remember, okay? So the first one is a reputation disrupt is happening so I'm gonna show you exactly what that means like what has changed what has changed today from like maybe just a couple years ago in terms of reputation why it's so important number two SERPs influence decision pre-click so that sounds kind of weird but you'll you'll understand here in a minute there's actually decisions being made in the search engines before people even visit your website so I'm gonna show you what that means and then the third thing is that SEO reputation like you know your, your real reputation um, affects rankings, it affects CTR, and it affects traffic. So I'm going to show you how it all, all influences each other, okay? So let's get right into it. Number one, a reputation disrupt is happening. So what does that mean? So today, reputation and social proof is essential, okay? So there's, there's a study that came out that showed that 93% of U.S. consumers check online reviews before shopping or dining. <laughs> I mean, that, that's basically... Everybody, like 93% is basically everyone. I don't know who the 7% are that are not checking reviews, but pretty much everyone is checking reviews before shopping or dining. That means they're checking out your services, okay? Now, consumers are more savvy than ever, and people, they really just don't buy with it without investigation. I mean, just the amount of information that's out there about brands, products, and services is enormous. And it doesn't really matter if, you, if you're selling like the highest end service in the world or you're selling literally toilet paper. So check this out. I found this toilet paper on Amazon and it has over 5,000 reviews, okay? So think about that for a second. Over 5,000 people took the time after, after purchasing and using this, this low-end low, low service, right? This low-end product. Um, they went and they took the time to leave a review on, on what they thought about that toilet paper, right? So... So if a toilet paper gets 5,000 reviews, people took the time to do that. Think about, you know, 
how much people care about your brand, your products and services. Okay, so so yeah, basically, reputation and social proof is essential. Okay, now another thing is that there's more review sites than ever before. We've seen a, a huge increase in the amount of review sites um, that are online. So there are actually over 400 sites now. And the more important thing is than the sheer number of these is that these properties are actually ranking in your brand and niche queries, meaning that when people are searching for your brand or they're searching for something in your niche, right? These kinds of properties, these review sites, they're ranking. And maybe even more important than that is that they're displaying these schema stars. So you can see here's an example on the right where Facebook is displaying um, the schema stars of the rating of us, right? And now what that really means is that small brands can now compete against big brands, okay? So this kind of puts uh, uh, big brands, at, you know, who are traditionally not as great at collecting reviews and try to, you know, they, use, they used to use their marketing power to just, uh, you know, overcome any kind of objections or anything like that. Well, now with search engines, I mean, anyone can see it's very clear who, is, who, who actually has good products because of all these reviews, right? Access to clear and product comparison leads to equalization in the marketplace. So small brands, like a small smart brand that collects good reviews, they can really come up and start competing with big brands who weren't traditionally as good. They thought their market Marketing power could just wipe out any competition and consumers now have more choices more availability and more accessibility than than ever before right so what does the rise in review visibility actually mean well let's talk about it okay so my second part is this decisions are being made pre-click in the SERPs and so let me show you what it, what that actually means okay Schema stars and reviews are super prominent now. So like I showed you here, this is like a little clip from the search engines. You can see the star rating that's just being displayed right there in Google, okay? So here are some examples of where Google is displaying reviews and schema stars. So obviously if you're a local business and you either have a geo-modified uh, query or non-geo-modified, Google finds it, you know, it's the local, determines it's local, it's gonna bring up that local pack. And guess what's in the local pack? Reviews, right? You see those very prominently, those, those star ratings prominently displayed right there in the local pack. AdWords, AdWords has reviews uh, integrated as well. So you can see here, uh, that's, that's one way you could set your, yourself uh, uh, apart from your competitors that are running AdWords ads. So very prominent. Facebook got into the review game a couple years ago as well and is now displaying schema stars. This is important because, you know, Facebook a lot of times ranks for brand queries. People are people are searching for your brand. Your Facebook page is going to come up. Well, it's going to display those schema stars. So it's important that you have reviews there. Check this out. The knowledge graph. Now, the knowledge graph is a huge source of reviews and it's very prominent. You know, people search for your locations or your brand. Um, if you're a multi-location business, a lot of times Knowledge Graph is going to come up and look what's right there. It's got your reviews super prominent right after your name, okay? So it's brought that right up front, okay? On top of that, uh, reviews are actually being aggregated, um, not just your Google reviews in that Knowledge Panel, but actually from around the web. So it's important that you have, you know, this kind of social fortress of multiple different places. So you can see here in this, it's a really cool Chicago restaurant that you should uh, check out if you're ever there, uh, Yuzu Sushi. Um, but basically you can see how on top of the Google reviews, they're aggregating reviews from Facebook and Zomato. So Google is really pulling those in and displaying those super prominently. On top of that, it's pulling in critic reviews. So, you know, reviews that may have been buried on, on some other site, now Google is pulling those up and displaying those prominently again in that knowledge panel. Just like I mentioned earlier, review directories, like there's over 400 of them now, and they're, they're, they're displaying schema stars and they're ranking for your brand name. So you can see here, um, these review directories are, are showing schema stars and like, you know, the first three or the first four results are actually Yelp in this case. But um, there's obviously a lot of different restaurant directories, but you can see how prominent it is when you search for this brand in that location. On top of that, don't forget about mobile. Obviously, when people are searching um, for you know a pizza restaurant or anything uh, on Google Maps, etc., it's going to come up with your review schema there. And so the point is that now reputation, in terms of S from an SEO perspective, it's super prominent in the SERPs. So here's uh, on the right, you can see an example of of I've highlighted all the places where Google is showing. Uh, 
uh, your reputation. Uh, and you can see it's about like 60, 70 percent of the page is uh, is reputation. Whereas maybe a few years ago that might not have been so so prominent. But this is happening for your brand, um, uh, and so so you got to take reputation super seriously now. So like I said, you know it's very prominent in the search engines, but Google's not actually stopping there. Uh, Google's taking it even farther. And let me show you what's what's happening. So entire purchases are being made in the Google SERPs. So in the last example, I showed you how, you know, if, if a searcher was, was searching, they're going to get an immediate picture of your, of your reputation, right? And they may make a decision um, based on you or your competitor uh, just on your star rating. So that's, that's pretty important. But check this out. Google's taking it even farther. Entire purchases are, are made in the SERPs. So here's some examples. Um, number one is hotel booking. So now Google's displaying um, the schema stars for a bunch of hotels, but on top of that, it's actually helping you make that decision. So you can actually search in Google for the dates that you're going to be there. It'll tell you what hotels are available. And I've even seen some examples of the ability to actually book a hotel straight up in the SERP, like put in your credit card and actually book it there. But even if that doesn't happen, Google's helping you make that decision based on reputation before they push you to like an aggregator like booking.com or something like that. So your de the decision for which hotel uh, you're going to book is being made in the search engines and it's totally based on reputation. Okay. Another example, local service booking with uh, Google a HS saves with, um, with uh, AdWords Express. So Google's actually letting you book, um, uh, for instance, plumbers. You can actually book a, uh, a service with plumbers, and pe people are making that decision based on your reputation. You can see here the most prominent thing <laughs> here. It's, it's your name and your reputation. So obviously that's super important. Um, and let me show you this, the second, the second uh, uh, part of that. If you actually went and clicked on one of those plumbers and started to book them, you can see here this is what it looks like and you can go ahead and send the request straight from Google. So before anyone ever visited that, that company's website or any of that kind of stuff, they're making the decision actually booking services um, based on basically your reputation. Okay? And on top of that, Google has another feature called uh, uh, Reserve with Google. And what this is, is you can actually book uh, different types of classes. Like for instance, this is a yoga class that you can actually book straight in the SERPs. You can, you can, uh, you can find it, find which classes are available through, through different uh, locations. You can see their star rating. You can go and you can actually find a time and book and pay without ever leaving the actual search engines. Okay, so with that said, I mean, from an SEO perspective, the reputation really now is pre-click. Okay, so people are making those decisions when they look at the search engines before they ever even go to your website. And a lot of times, um, you can see in some of these examples, you know, people never even are going to visit your website. So I think that this is happening now. You obviously can see it, and I think it's going to happen more and more. Google obviously um, is treating reputation, um, taking re reputation very seriously. And this is really cool for, for big brands. It's also really cool for small brands to really come up. So having solid reputation is critical in SEO today and in the future. So if you're an SEO and you're in charge of SEO, this is kind of part of your job now. Um, you know, this may have been something that was traditionally in PR, uh, in the PR wheelhouse, but now, now we've got to be multidisciplinary, right? And so it's really important in SEO today that you have a really great reputation. So let's get into part three. It's reputation influences rankings, CTR, and traffic. Okay, so that's kind of our job of SEO is to you know get get more targeted traffic to our um, to our to our websites, right? And so reputation is actually really influencing that now. So here's some examples of why. So if you are a local business, um, this can really affect the the traffic that you're getting. So Places Scout came out with a really cool study last year, and they showed that reviews. They said that reviews might be the new backlink 2.0. So they said that Google reviews came in as the number one positive correlating ranking factor, and businesses that have more reviews tend to rank higher in the local search results. Okay, so this is really influencing your actual rankings. Okay, and this is not just that case study is actually backed up by Moz as well in their most recent local search ranking factors study, and they showed that review signals have a 13 percent, um, uh, 13 percent influence on the actual rankings. Okay, so it has a, a very large percentage, um, very large influence on the actual rankings that you have for for the for your local search results. 
On top of that, you know, all these uh, all these directories that are displaying schema stars or maybe reading your own website, etc. This is really influencing click through rate, which influences traffic. Right. So uh, there's been a ton of case studies that came out, but basically they, they say um, that uh, in the U.S. and abroad, retail firms can get up to a 30 percent increase in organic traffic by using structure markup like schema microdata. So those sites that are ranking in your search results, those review directories that have the schema star ratings, people are clicking on those. OK, people are clicking on those and they're checking out your reviews because they want to know if you had a bad reputation, why? Or if you have a great reputation, why? Right. So it's really important. It's affecting your traffic. And the thing is, when you get reviews, you're basically uh, and you put those on your website, that's user generated content. So, for instance, you have a product page and you start displaying all those reviews. You're going to be able to create a lot a uh, lot more, a lot more content on that site and long tail traffic. So displaying those reviews and that user generated content in a crawlable way adds content plus relevant long tail keywords to your page. So that can really help increase your traffic when they're putting in all those, you know, extraneous words that are really relevant um, uh, to, to those products on those pages, right? So my main point, if you boil it all down, is like this. It's to survive in the SERPs and the battle of pre-click comparison shopping, you must have a scalable review strategy. You got to take this really seriously now, right? You can see how important it is. So with that said, let's do it, guys. That's what my whole part two is about. It's about building a scalable reputation machine. So in this part, I'm going to be showing you how to actually create that machine that's going to generate you reviews and create that positivity fortress. OK, so this part got four takeaways that you're going to want to remember. The number one is choose your priorities. I'm going to show you how to choose what sites um, are your top priorities um, to go after. The second thing you want to do is you got to create that scalable feedback system. And I'm going to show you some tips and strategies and, and, and tactics that we've used and we've helped our clients with that you can just take and use in your business to actually get a lot more reviews to your, to your brand, right? Number three is deal with negative reviews. So negative reviews have uh, a lot of asterisks to them. And I'm going to show you some, uh, some cool tricks, how you should be thinking about negative reviews, how you should respond to them, and, um, and also give you a cool hack that will help it so that you, the, the negative reviews, they, they never go public, OK? So we can pr actually prevent negative reviews. And I'll show you what that hack is here in just a minute. And then number four is you got to promote that reputation, right? Just like us, we had no reputation to beginning, even though we had, you know, a good one with our current clients. We wanted to actually we need to actually go and promote that reputation. So I'm going to show you how you can do that and how this can actually make you more money. All right. So let's get right into it, guys. In terms of creating the system, so you need to have a reputation system. Like I said in the beginning, you know, my my experience is in marketing operations. Meaning that I've created a ton of different systems. I'm, an, I'm a systems guy. I'm an operations guy. And you know that anything that really works consistently is, is a system. So I'm going to show you how to do that. You need to be proactive in building this. So you can't just leave your reputation up to its own devices, up to the people that come and visit your business and hope it does the best. Um, you need to actually be proactive in building that reputation and promoting it. And the thing is that constantly asking for feedback it really gives you a chance to serve your customers better. So it's not just about getting the five star reviews, right? Obviously, you want those, but it's it's it goes deeper than that. It's about um, serving your customers better by collecting this proactive feedback. And I'm going to show you what I mean by that. OK, so let me give you a quick little case study before we get into it. So this can actually help change a reputation very quickly. We were able to take a brand from a horrible 3.5 stars to a 4.9 stars in less than two months. Now, obviously, I think this is an important point to make is that, you know, this can't, if you have a bad business or your, your product or service is not good, you need to work on that first, right? It's going to be very difficult to, to change a reputation if, if you have actual real problems with your business. So don't use this for evil, but hopefully no one using this, watching this presentation actually uh, uh, <laughs> it has actual bad business. I don't, I don't think that you do. But it, you may have a case like this, right? So we had, we had a client come to us, and this was an acquisition, meaning that um, a, a new company acquired this business from an old owner. And what happened is the old owner didn't really, it was a big business. They had tons of customers, but they didn't really treat their customers in the way they should have been treated. They, they, their products and services were really not up to par. And so the new owners 
they came in and they changed the reputation or they, they changed the products and services. So they really improved it. They improved the customer, or they improved their, their customer service, all that kind of stuff. And they made the business way better. But unfortunately, their online reputation or the previous online reputation came with that came with that brand. So they still had that 3.5 star rating. So they came to us and we started helping them build up that reputation. And you can see that in less than two months, we were able to take them from a 3.5 star rating, which is really bad, <laughs> and to a 4.9 star rating, which is awesome, in just less than two months. So we're able to really uh, help them very quickly. So it doesn't matter if you have no reputation or even if you have a bad reputation, it doesn't have to be a long process. We can really help you very quickly as long as you have, you know, you made those changes inside your company and you actually do have good products and services, okay? So how do you do it? All right, let me show you. It's pretty pretty cool. All right, so first first part, what you wanna do is you wanna identify your priority targets. You gotta figure out uh, what sites do you actually want those reviews on, okay? And so my suggestion is this. You wanna rank by visibility. What's actually coming up in, in Google when you search these things? When you search for your brand, or excuse me, when you search for your niche, so when people are ty typing in your main product keywords or your niche keywords, what's actually coming up for that? So you wanna find all the niche directories or you know, whatever's coming up when people are typing in your, your keywords, right? Second thing you wanna do is you wanna, you wanna search for your brand name. What is actually coming up for your brand when people are searching for that? You wanna search for your brand name plus reviews. So for instance, like the Hoth plus reviews and seeing what kinds of uh, directories are coming up for that. And then you wanna figure out what's coming up for your brand name autocomplete. So Google obviously is gonna suggest things in autocomplete. You wanna figure out what Google's suggesting there and then what properties are ranking in the search engines um, based on that. And you're gonna get a, get, a, get a nice list. And these are the sites that people are seeing when they're searching for all your relevant keywords or your brand name, right? You wanna figure out what's coming up for that and those are gonna be your priority targets, okay? So obviously there's gonna be a couple high ones um, that people usually have. First one is Google reviews. If the knowledge panel is coming up for your business, um, you're gonna to wanna to concentrate on getting those, those reviews straight up in Google because that's very prominent. On top of that, Facebook is a big one because it, usually, it comes up for a lot of brand, um, brand queries and it's also displaying schema stars. So those are, those are probably gonna be two high priorities for you. Um, but then kind of drilling down, there's a ton of niche specific directories. So depending on what niche you're in, if it's if you're a lawyer, if you're a local business or you're in a, you're a restaurant or, or whoever you are, there's, there's review directories and there's niche specific directories for pretty much every niche. Okay, you want to figure out which ones are ranking a lot for your niche specifically. One thing I want to point out is a, a lot of times when we think about getting reviews, you know, we, we think about external campaigns, we think about our customers, but the reality is a lot of times... Um, when, some, when you search for a brand, there are actually sites like Glassdoor or Indeed.com that are coming up that are actually re, your employees are rating um, what it's like to, to work at your, your business. And that, that, that kind of gives um, an idea to your customers uh, you know, of your reputation as well, also internally. So don't forget about internal campaigns, just kind of as a side note. So after you have... Um, uh, you know, identified all of these different directories, your, your highest visibility ones, what you want to do is you want to start collecting reviews and rotate through these to build a bulletproof reputation, okay? You want to rotate and start pushing reviews to this site and then to your second most popular one and then just kind of rotate through them and build up that bulletproof reputation. Thing is, new sites are popping up all the time and by building a system that you can constantly push positive reviews to like wherever you're needed you're going to build up that massive brand protection that, that fortress that i was talking about okay so what you want to do is when you see these sites if you haven't worked on your reputation before you want to start monitoring these and you want to respond so if you already have reviews on these sites you want to go through them and respond to any reviews that are there um if it's whether it's positive or negative we like to respond to to all of all of the um, all of the reviews and you want to start really monitoring these okay so you want to find out where reviews are being left for your products and services and just constantly monitor these and respond right so the second part is we want to create scalable proactive feedback systems okay so in terms of creating these systems basically um, I didn't necessarily say review systems um, what I said is proactive feedback channels okay and when you make it easy to give feedback and flow that into a system of escalation, um, that's really going to help you, uh, you know, have a better relationship with your customers. Okay. 
So what I mean by that is this, is that a lot of times when people leave a bad review or negative review or whatever, they do it because it didn't meet their expectations. Either either one, it's uh, way higher than their expectations, so they want to uh, uh, leave a review. You know, they're really motivated. But most of the time, it's like that you didn't you met you didn't meet their expectations in a bad way, right? People are they had a bad experience and they they're motivated to leave that review. And the reason that they want to go leave a review is because they felt like you couldn't help them with their problem, right? They didn't get a chance for you to actually go and, and solve that. Now, a lot of times I think that's because you, they don't have these proactive feedback channels. A lot of companies don't have these proactive feedback channels. It's, more, it's difficult to get your thoughts heard. It's difficult to contact the customer service. So, for instance, we make it a point to make sure that anyone can contact us at any point in time. So, uh, whether it's, you know, we send out transactional emails like a purchase receipt, etc., you can reply to those. A lot, of, a lot of brands have no replies. So, you can't actually send an email. It just goes nowhere. Or sometimes it's difficult to get a customer service rep on the phone. You have to go through an enormous phone tree. Or the customer service reps don't, um, they don't know they can actually help you. Or it could be any number of things. So what you want to do is you want to make sure that with, within your brand and within your customer experience, they have a lot of ways, your customers have a lot of ways to, to give you feedback and to contact you and, and let their voice be heard as opposed to, feeling like they they can't be heard, going off and getting mad and coming back a week later and leaving a, a horrible review for you, okay? Um, I say that people complain when they're frustrated. And so you want to give them easy outlets to be heard, right? Okay, so how do you do that? Well, there's lots of different ways. But basically, it all kind of boils down to this. Just ask. You, you need to ask customers for feedback. And you want to do that with the process. So let me give you some examples of really effective ways we've been able to ask for uh, feedback and get reviews, okay? So the first one, a very effective way, it's pretty simple. It's just ask via email autoresponder. And notice, this is not just a one-time thing. I said autoresponder, meaning that we ask, we send out emails to our customers and we ask for reviews on, on a three-week timeline. So we'll send out an email. If they review us on the first one, that's cool. If they don't, we'll send them another email just um, politely reminding them or asking them for some feedback a, a week later. And then we send another one uh, uh, another week later. So it's just a simple three email sequence and because a lot of people don't respond on the first one. And, and so that allows us to get a ton of reviews. And it lets, us, lets the, the customer do it on their own time meaning that um, you know, they can respond to that email whenever they would like. Okay? So that's, that's a really effective way. Just having a very simple email autoresponder is a very effective way to get customers to leave feedback for you uh, when they're right type of mind. Okay? Second thing we do is we ask via website widgets. So we have a little widget that we put on our site, and we put it right on the thank you page. So people go through, they select a product, they purchase the product, and then right there on that thank you page, we ask for review. So from a psychological perspective, this is a really great time to get positive feedback or get a positive review out of your customers. They, they just decided that they trust your brand, they went through and they purchased it, they're very excited about your product or service, and then right on that thank you page, even before they got the product um, delivered to them, you ask, you can ask them how their experience was, how their experience was with your customer service, with the sales rep, with, with the purchasing experience, and you can get a positive review right there. So we get a ton of reviews just by asking on that thank you page. Third thing is we ask in email signatures. So, so think about this. Um, in every one of our uh, customer interactions with our support team, we're sending tons of emails, interacting with customers every day, helping them solve their problems. And then in the, the footer of that, underneath the, the signature, we're able to ask them um, how their experience was. So every email that we do is an opportunity for someone to leave a review for us. And think about how many emails are sent from your company every day that interact with customers. Every one of those can be a potential um, uh, opportunity to get a review, especially if you're, you know, uh, you're having these positive interactions over email. You're helping people solve their problems, etc. So we get a lot of reviews by by putting it in our email signatures. Okay, we've also started testing this out, uh, uh, just uh, asking for reviews via text. Um, so obviously, email rates over time. Uh, you know, it, it, they go down, your, your, op your open rates over time, they very much go down. Uh, but text messaging is a way to really get customers, uh, you get really high open rates, you get like 80, 90% open rates on text. So we've been testing this out 
and uh, asking customers via text. And it's really good if you do it, you know, right after they purchase. So a, a very timely thing. Um, you can get you can get really good reviews by um, asking people via text. And the thing is. This is not just for small brands. This can actually be scaled um, no matter how big you are. And so let me show you an example of how we've been able to do that. So we've actually worked um, a little bit in the auto industry. And in the auto industry, they have something called a, uh, a DMS or dealer management system. And basically, they ha that's where they house all their customer data. So wherever whatever happened in an interaction with the dealer, if they someone bought a car, they got a, a part service, all the customer information is in this in this database. And what we're able to do is we're able to create an API integration and, and integrate that into our system and really start collecting positive, uh, proactive feedback from, from the customers in a very timely manner. So what happens is um, the we ha they have the DMS, the dealer has the, the dealer management system which houses all the data. You know, customer comes in, something happens, they get a they buy a car, they buy a part, they get a part serviced, etc. That information goes into their database. And what we do is we API into that. So we get the customer information um, directly from there in a very timely manner. We're able to send a text request for review, like how is your experience buying an Acura, a 2017 Acura, or whatever happened. When they get that request, it, it, they'll, they'll hit a link and it'll take them to their our mobile optimized review portal. And when they re rate the their experience there, it'll actually push them to leave a public review on, on a site that's important to that dealer. So for instance, cars.com. And you can see how with this API integration, we can scale this and send thousands of text messages and get really timely feedback from your customers right after there, that happens. And <laughs> this is kind of important because some industries have, have tried to fake this process and they've been, they've had major major fines for <laughs> for doing fake reviews and deceptive practices. So you can see how actually if you have a, if you have a good system, you know this is actually really easy to get positive reviews um, if if you do it right. And if you do it wrong and you try to do it fake, uh, you're you're doing a disservice to your customers, and it can actually result in a enormous uh, multi million dollar fines. Okay, so we're really trying to help change this industry. Okay, and the thing is, it's not just auto industry. You can really do this in any vertical, um, whoever you are, uh, wherever your customer data lies. If we're able to make an integration to that one way or another through API or other methods, maybe more simple methods. Um, you know, you can you can really scale this in any vertical with that same or very similar type of process. So, you know, I, I know what she's probably thinking is why be why be so aggressive? I mean, we're talking about sending tons tons of uh, reviews. We're we're following up with people to get reviews um, or or feedback. Well. By being aggressive, this really lets you get quick feedback and encourage reviews when clients are top of mind and relevant. So like I said, I've kind of touched on this a few times, but doing it like right as they're having their experience and trying to get that review right then, that's it's really when you're top of mind. If people go away and you ask them for a review two months later, uh, their incentive is, is a lot lower, right? And what this does when you're aggressive and you do it in a very timely manner, this helps you respond to any issues quickly versus letting the customer's feelings boil. So you always want to be following up your customers and, and making sure you know they had a great experience. And if, if they didn't have a great experience, you want to, you know, you want to actually take care of them. You want to uh, serve them better. You want to try to fix that problem in a very timely manner. If you don't collect that feedback, you know, if you're not proactively asking them how their experience is, a lot of a lot of people think just they feel like they'll 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 never be heard or whatever. This just don't bother. And so they'll go away and they'll, they'll boil and then maybe they'll tell some friends or they'll even feel so motivated that they actually go and leave a, a negative review. But by, by being aggressive about this and actually collecting that proactively or asking for that feedback, it lets, you, lets them have a chance to respond. And when they do respond, then you can direct that feedback to the correct channel where there's a chance to get the best interaction. Meaning that if they give you negative feedback, well, then you can push them to a customer support service that's actually going to help them. You know, when people go and they leave a, a bad review on a Yelp or something, a lot of times I feel like they don't actually want help. If they really wanted help, they'd come to your business and explain to the owner what happened. But what they really, what they have instead is they have a vendetta against your business and they want to hurt you. So they want to leave a public review and they don't really think that their issue is going to be solved. So by being aggressive, this helps you direct um, that negative feedback to the correct channel where they have the best chance of, of getting their problem solved, okay?
So um, let's talk about that a little bit. So people ask, like, what about negative reviews? And negative reviews have, have a stigma to them, um, and they have a lot of asterisks to them. So I want to talk about how you should be thinking about negative reviews, uh, how you should deal with them, and also how you can prevent them, right? It's pretty cool. So let me show you this little hack. So in terms of reviewer motivation, uh, most moto review, motivated reviewers have a bad experience. Okay, and a simple misunderstanding can lead to big reputation problems. So a lot of times, you know, in every business, no, if you're selling to a lot of customers, you're going to get people that are upset with your business. It doesn't matter how good you are, how perfect you are. People, there's just going to be a lot of times a simple misunderstanding that that can just happen, and and it can lead to big reputation problems if you know if it's not dealt with right. And this can happen especially if you're aggressively asking for reviews. Now, I want to point out that negative reviews don't necessarily mean bad, right? So we're not trying to avoid negative feedback. And in fact, in my opinion, negative isn't bad. It actually can be really great. So the reason it can be great is because if someone gives you negative feedback and they do it in a clear manner, they explain exactly what they mean with their negative feedback, that really gives you a chance, they're giving you an opportunity to fix that problem and also uh, potentially fix your systems, your processes, your protocols, improve your business because you can understand exactly where the disconnect was. So for instance, in our business, when someone gives us negative feedback, the first thing that we say in terms of our protocols, we say thank you because they give us that opportunity to improve as opposed to maybe just going somewhere else and complaining about our business publicly, they gave us an opportunity to improve. They let us know what issue they're having and gave us that, that chance to, to make it right, right? And this helps you serve your market better. So, so yeah, we're not avoiding negative feedback. We're not avoiding, um, you know, bad sentiments. Uh, we're going to avoid negative reviews, but we're not avoiding that negative feedback, right? Negative feedback can actually be, be good for us, okay? And the thing is, also negative, or you can actually leverage that negative, uh, those negative reviews, right? So there's a study that came out that showed that having a perfect score isn't always the best idea. And having some negative reviews make you look real. So the study showed that 68% of consumers, so the vast majority of consumers, they trusted Yelp pages where there were more, where there were bad reviews mixed in with the good. So if you get a five-star reputation, you have a ton of reviews there, and you have nothing else mixing it up, you know, it's it's kind of fishy. Consumers are pretty smart, and and so you know, having negative reviews or, or non-perfect ratings um, can actually it's not actually bad. It actually just makes you look real, okay, and. When you go and if you do you have these negative reviews, um, you know, actually putting a public response, that really shows that you have good customer service. It shows that you actually care, right? And on top of that, when you get these negative reviews, it can help you do a lot of things. Because kind of like I was, I was talking about earlier, it can help you improve your product. So if someone comes to you and they say, you know, this product has this defect, well, that's, that's great because now we know what's wrong with the product. We knew what an expectation was. And so now we can go review the product quality and see if we can fix that. It can help you clarify expectations in sales and marketing. So if someone, they thought one thing, they expected one thing, and they actually received a different product, well, you can figure out what the disconnect was and go clarify that in your marketing. Um, it also leads to better marketing content. So if you keep getting the same questions over and over, you can create an entire campaign to educate your customers on, on, a, on a certain aspect of your business, right? So that can, that can create better marketing content. And on top of that, it can help you improve your staff or training or your operations or your SOPs, right? Standard operating procedures. So you can figure out at what stage, um, when the customer gives you a complaint, what stage of the process did something bad happen? Did something unexpected happen that left them with a negative sentiment? And you can go back and you can fix that. You can fix your SOPs. You can train your staff in a better way to react differently next time. And it can just really help you improve your entire processes. So this negative feedback, or these negative reviews, you know, this can actually really help you improve your business, okay? Now, you want to make feedback easy. And by making it easy to give feedback, we can prevent disgruntled customers and direct them where they want, right, to someone that can actually help them. So how do you do that? Well, here's the trick. Here's how you prevent negative reviews from going public. It, basically, you just got to pre-qualify your reviews. So here's what we do. So for instance, if someone comes to our website, we ask them to rate us on a five-star basis. And if they rate us a four or five stars, a really good review, right? What we do is we actually push them to leave a public review on, on one of the sites of our choosing. So for instance, in this, we'll push them to leave a review on Facebook or Google, okay? But if they 
have a, 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 a negative experience and they rate us on a three star or less basis, instead of pushing them to leave a public review, we're gonna push them to a form like this where they can privately fill that out and it's gonna go right to our customer service and we can deal with that privately as opposed to um, them uh, leaving that review public, right? And this really lets you handle it privately and it takes fear away from ever from asking for reviews. So a lot of these examples, I'm showing you guys how to be really aggressive to send out uh, tons of reviews via email and in your, in your, on your website widgets and, and uh, in your uh, signatures and via text and all these kinds of stuff. And so you're wondering, man, aren't I gonna get a bunch of reviews? Well, if you use this pre-qualification process, this really takes away the fear from ever asking for reviews and you can go really aggressive. And on top of that, this helps serve the customer better, right? Because we are proactively asking for their feedback as opposed to just letting, letting it go. And if any negative reviews slip through and you know somebody maybe goes like directly to your web or goes directly to that review directory and leaves you a bad review, basically they're gonna be buried by the sheer volume of positive reviews we're getting by, by being aggressive and using this pre-qualification process, okay? So pretty cool, right? So the fourth part is that now we got a ton of different reviews going to all these different sites. Now you gotta promote your reputation, okay? So how do you do that? How do you actually make more money? So here's how you do it. So first you wanna aggregate your reviews. So you wanna find all the review directories that you have and start monitoring those and aggregating these all into one, one centralized database, okay? Then you wanna display them on your sales and product pages. So for instance, we love to display ours right by um, the, the pricing. So this, this is great when someone's going and they're checking out our products and they go and they're about ready to purchase and right on that purchase button, they see all these five star reviews um, right underneath that. It just gives you that social proof, that confidence to go ahead and, and, and go through that purchase. And this works really well. And there's case studies to back it up. They, sh they show that you can get up to an 18% sales lift just by putting reviews on your page. So who, who would like to have 18% uh, better sales uh, just by putting reviews on your page, right? Seems pretty easy. <laughs> um, definitely, you know, as we were doing this, we're seeing all of our... Um, you know, all, all of our conversion rates go up. We're seeing a lot more sales. Our business is growing. So this is, is a really great social proof. And it's super easy to just put them right there on your sales page, okay? Um, now, we have a system to do this, um, but you can also use uh, uh, different widgets. So there's a lot of different niche sites that have review widgets that you can place on your site. So for instance, Yelp has one. Um, if you're like in the restaurant or local business space, AVVO, uh, if you're in, in the attorney space, you can put, they have a badge you can put uh, on your website. Zillow has it. There's a ton of different ones. Um, we have a widget ourselves, um, or you can use any of these to put on your website to really give that social proof, okay? On top of that, what you can also do is uh, create a reviews page. So you just take a, take a page out of your website. If people are reviewing you on a, on a business basis, like on, on your actual service, your whole business as a whole, as opposed to products, you can go and create a, a review page that's called Your Brand Reviews, Ratings, Testimonials, and then uh, display all of your reviews and uh, you know where whatever you get, display them right on that page. And then a lot of times that will rank for your brand terms. So for instance, the Hoth reviews, we did this, we created a page, it displays all of the different, you know, hundreds of reviews we have. We have more now, we probably have like 500 plus reviews from when I took the screenshot. And this is great because it ranks, right? It ranks when people are searching for our reputation, okay? On top of that, we use it as social media content. So if we get a really great review, we can push these um, reviews to social media. And this really keeps top, top of mind with our customers. If you're following us on Facebook or on Twitter, uh, we have uh, you know reviews that come up every now and then. And they'll show, you know, keep you top of mind, man, people are really reviewing, reviewing this brand. Everyone's having a great experience. Maybe I should go purchase something from them, right? It's pretty great social media content. So my conclusion, guys, now you have a scalable reputation boosting machine. So we've been through a lot. Basically, here's what we, we talked about, defining the targets that are visible in the SERP. So you got to figure out where you actually want to push your reviews to, what's important to you, your brand, your niche, etc. Second thing, you use scalable systems to proactively create positive reputation. So I showed you ways that you can uh, get a lot of reviews by emailing people, by sending text messages, by using it on website widgets, all these kinds of things to really proactively ask for reviews and get them to review you and push, push to public sites, etc. 
Third thing, prevent negative reviews by pre-qualifying targets. We talked a lot about negative reviews and how, how you should always be collecting that feedback and, and, and helping direct those to the right, um, right channels and also uh, preventing those negative reviews by doing that pre-qualification process. And then the last thing, we taught you how to make more money, right? So we talked about promoting your reputation so it's really visible. It's, you know, the entire first part of this presentation, part one, was all about how Google more and more is displaying that reputation. You know, now it's actually like 70% of the search results when people are searching for your brand or your niche. So we're showing you how to promote that reputation so it's visible to everyone and it's making you more money, right? So by following this plan, you can really create that fortress of positivity. And guys, um, I know that uh, this all sounds very easy, but when it gets down to like going back and trying to implement this in your business, it comes with a lot of it comes with a handful of problems, right? So getting all this done would be a completely manual process and take forever to see any real results. So if you're actually manually emailing people um, or you're manually sending out text messages to ask for reviews, it's gonna take forever to see any real results. And so you need to set up a process for review collection, an email autoresponder, you wanna, you gotta manually paste reviews to your website and social media and basically it's a ton of work, right? So, guys, I want to ask you, if there was, what if there was a way to do any of these things? What if there was an easy way to collect these reviews and push them to any website you want with just one line of code, right? That would be pretty awesome. Or if there was a made-for-you widget that prevented these negative reviews like I showed you, right, like we use. Or what if there was a done-for-you autoresponder that was ready to start requesting reviews today, like already pre-built, ready for you to just drop your customer information in there and start pushing out requests for reviews today, right? What if there's a way to monitor any reviews that came in from outside so you can quickly respond? So obviously if a negative review comes in, you wanna, you wanna monitor the, all these different sites where they are and be able to quickly respond. You need something that's gonna alert you to that, right? So what if there's a widget that you could use to market these reviews on your website to like aggregate these and really put them on your product pages like I showed you? And what if there was a way to automatically push these reviews to your social channels? That'd be pretty cool, right? It'd help you make a lot more money. Well, I think you probably understand what I'm getting at. Um, basically, uh, uh, getting reviews would be really easy, right? <laughs> so guys, we put together something really special for you and it's called Hoth Stars. Hoth Stars is our uh, review management software. It's been really great. It's what has driven all of the examples that I've shown you in this presentation today um, from ourselves, uh, changing reputations of the businesses, and in all the different facets of how I showed you how to collect reviews, etc. Basically, it is awesome reputation boosting software. And this can help you change your reputation extremely quickly. Again, like I showed you, we increased uh, a client star rating from a horrible 3.5 to an awesome 4.8 in two months. Um, so it's, it can happen very quickly if you have a poor reputation. On top of that, uh, it's not just them. There's, we've done this with lots of different brands. Um, this brand, for instance, had a huge increase in positive reviews you can see that their, the total reviews went up to over 40 in, in a very short period of time. And that's, a, that's from a small business. Um, client case study here from no reputation to an awesome reputation to a, a very high 4.7 star rating and having over 80 reviews in a very short period of time. And guys, this is like no other review platform, okay? There's, there's, there's other people in the space, but this is like nothing else. We designed this. We don't want you to just monitor your reviews. We wanna actually be able to help you change and build that reputation, okay? So with Hoth Stars, you guys are gonna get a lot of different stuff. So the first thing is you get the review acquisition system. So you wanna be able to actually acquire those reviews. So we're gonna give you an embeddable widget, an email footer widget, and this widget helps you prevent negative reviews, right? It does that pre-qualification process. And it connects to over 50 different review sites and you can really just, you can collect unlimited reviews with this. It's not limited. There's no, we don't charge on a per review basis or anything like that. You can push as many reviews as you want, okay? With the second part is you get uh, review request automation. So like I, like I told you about uh, email campaigns, uh, we have email campaigns ready to go. We have SMS campaigns ready to go. So you can really um, automate that request um, from an email or SMS basis, okay? We also do review monitoring and reporting. So this monitors the major review sites and you can get review alerts and this produces 100% uh, 
custom white label reports that if you're a reseller, you can just send these to your client and it has no branding or logos or anything. you can put your own branding and logos on it if you want. It doesn't have anything to do with us. So, so it's really great for review, monitoring, and reporting. And uh, on top of that, it's also great for review promotion. Just like I talked to you in that last part, you want to promote those reviews. So you can auto post these reviews to your social media. You can also, dis we'll give you another type of widget to display the reviews on your website. So right on your product pages or, or below your pricing to give them that really great social confidence. So it has all of these uh, uh, different facets to it. And the thing is, guys, this software, it integrates with everything. It doesn't matter what niche you're in. So, so if, uh, you know, almost everybody has the major channels, so like Google or Facebook or Yelp, etc. Um, some of the major directories are in there, like Angie's List, Better, Better Business Bureau. You can push to those for social media, like I said, Facebook, Twitter, Nextdoor, LinkedIn, any of those kinds of things. If you're a local business, if you're an auto car dealer, if you're an auto repair, consumer advocacy, dentistry, restaurant, dining, educational schools, elder care, financial service, health care, moving and movers, pet services, property and rentals, real estate. You guys can see how this truly, it, we've, are, we've built custom integrations with all these different sites to help your customers leave reviews on these sites, okay? So it keeps going on and on. Salons and beauty software, travel and hospitality, home service, employment, lawyer, wedding industry, product, uh, Canada, uh, UK, so like location specific, Australia, other. Um, and even if we don't have one, we, maybe we have, you have some site that you specifically want it on, you can totally put in a custom link. Um, so uh, it has ultimate flexibility. We have over 50 review sites, native integrations built in, and also you know the ability to push it basically to anywhere you want. And the thing that's cool about Hothstars is your job is basically do nothing, okay? Uh, once the software is set up, you can just let it do its thing, and you can start getting reviews on autopilot. Like we set this up for ourselves, and we just kind of let it let it roll, right? As customers come in and they purchase or our customer service talks with our customers and they, they see that reviews in, in the footer or, or any of these different ways of getting reviews, it's all running on autopilot. That software does everything. We have really, it really is complete automation from email autoresponders to website widgets, email widgets, review collection, and the software, it just makes it so easy and so centralized, okay? So you guys, on top of that, you save huge, okay? So most reputation management companies, they charge thousands of dollars per month, and most review software doesn't do a fraction of what this does, okay? Most review software just monitors reviews and alerts you, okay? We don't wanna do that. We want, we wanna not only do that, we want to help you collect reviews, we wanna help you promote your reputation, we wanna help you make more money, right? So we give you widgets, email, social, and that can actually change your reputation, just like I showed you in the case studies, right? So guys, if you wanna check it out, it is called Hoth Stars, and you can check out all of the different facets about it and on our packages and pricing on the hoth.com slash stars. We have plans that start as low as $149 per month. So uh, if you think about that, man, uh, think about what your reputation is worth to, to you. And uh, so, so it's very extremely affordable. And um, I think you guys would love to check it out. So if you're interested, check it out at hoth.com slash stars. And we'd love to talk to you about getting your reputation marketing going improving your reputation and making more money, right? That's what it's all about. <laughs> okay, guys, thank you so much. Thanks so much for joining me and, and watching this video. If you have any questions, feel free to hit us up. Uh, we love to help you out with any questions you have or if you want help, want help with your reputation, getting you onboarded with Hoth Stars and really building a, an op awesome reputation for you and your business. So thanks again so much and we'll see you next time on the next video. Cheers.